Hey guys, so excited to bring another weekly teaching to you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share the message. If you don't have a hot cup of coffee or a cold glass of water, grab that and let's get started. But first, as we always do, let's start with prayer. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, if you can, just pause and pray with me. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for the men of SoCon. I thank you for the, so much for the men of this ministry that are uh, willing to give of their time, effort, and energy, gracious God, that they can be drawn closer to you and be stronger in you. God, I pray that the, the words of this message are blessed by you and that the, the hearts of men are changed by this word. Gracious God, for all you do for us and with us, we thank you. Thank you in advance for the blessings to come. In your most gracious, heavenly name we pray. Amen. Guys, I want to start by saying that I am not a gardener. <laughs> I have some, some gardeners in my family. My great-grandfather, for example, that guy could grow anything. I wish I learned from him. Uh, but I didn't get the gene, and I didn't spend the time with him before he passed to learn. But man, that guy could win. If he wanted to plant it, it was going to win a prize, uh, and it was going to taste delicious. So I don't have that experience, um, but I do want to talk to you a little bit about spiritual gardening, and that's something I think I can share some knowledge with you about. What I do know is this. Before you can have a bountiful garden, you got to make for some fertile soil. And to do that, you got to get rid of the weeds before you get started. You, you can't just go out in the backyard and throw some tomato seeds on the grass and expect something to happen. You gotta clear the ground, get some fertile dirt, and then plant the seed, and then you go from there. So spiritually, my, my question to you today is, what do you do with your weeds? What do I mean? Well, the question I'm asking you is, when you remove something of sin in your life, what do you do with it? My experience has been, unfortunately, sometimes, I go through the struggle and the trouble of pulling it up out of the ground, of uprooting it from my life, only to just kind of leave it lie dormant. And essentially, I'm just letting that weed lay right where I took it out of the ground from after all the hard work, effort, and energy that I used to get it out of a certain place in my life. I just let it lay there, and it doesn't take long before it takes root again, and I find myself dealing with the same struggle and frustration that I tried to remove at some point in my life. Another thing that I have found that I have done and I've seen other men do in, in ministry is sometimes we go through the trouble of removing a certain weed in our life, a certain sin in our life, only to replace it with something else. For example, I'm sure you know guys like I do that um, were heavy drug users and, uh, and tried to drop the habit of using drugs and ended up switching to alcohol thinking it, well, it's a lesser drug and I guess it is in some sense. And so they end up replacing one bad habit with another bad habit. I've seen people who were overeaters, who were really struggling with their weight and, and even the sin of gluttony to that point. And in trying to get rid of that sin, they replace it with a, another habit and they, maybe they start working out and exercising. And because of the habitual behavior, they find themselves habitually working out and it's no longer about their health and it's no longer about their physical condition, but it's about feeding the habit to the point where it is no longer healthy. And I'm sure you know of other examples like that. We just take one weed out of our garden only to replace it with another. We take one sin away, one bad habit away to only replace it with another. Another experience that I've had that's been a very negative experience in my life, not only because I've done it myself, but it's been done to me, is something that we do, especially in the Christian world, and that is we take our weeds and we place them in someone else's garden. Someone who may be bountiful and fruitful, and someone who may be, who be doing great things with Christ. And so um, we, we take that thing, and we're not going to them like a James 5, 16 example and confessing our sin to them. Instead, we're trying to draw them into our sin because somehow having somebody else do the same thing and have the same struggle we have some, somehow in our mind makes it less of a struggle or less of a sin. And so we draw them into our sin, and we essentially take our weed and put it in their fertile garden. Especially in the Christian world, I see that so much. And it's, and it's very frustrating because sometimes that person may be genuinely concerned for us and they may be genuinely attaching themselves to us to help us only for us to draw them into our world rather than for us to be drawn in to their God. Man, I want to give you a quote that I have here and I'm going to ask you to write this down if you have pen and paper or if you put it on your notes on your phone. But here's what I want to say to you in this message. Stop replanting the weeds of your past in the garden of your present 
and delaying or destroying the fruit of your future. I want to say that again. Stop replanting the weeds of your past in the garden of your present and delaying or destroying the fruit of your future. Men, whatever we do with the weeds, I can tell you there's one answer that absolutely works and is biblical. See, in Matthew 3 and 12, Jesus has given a parable. He's talking about separating the wheat from the chaff, and he's, and, and he's actually talking about people in this example, and I understand that, but I want, you to, I want you to just stay with me for just a moment. He says, I take the wheat and, and I store it. I take the chaff and I put it in the unquenchable fire. And he's talking about those believers versus non-believers, and I understand that. But I want, you to, I want you to hear what does he do with the weed? What does he do with the chaff? What does he do with the non-fruit-bearing product? He puts it into the unquenchable fire. Hebrews 12, 28, 29 tells us that God is the consuming fire. God is the consuming fire. So what I want you to hear today, men, is when we go through the trouble and struggle of removing a weed from our life rather than leaving it lay where it can take root again, rather than uh, replacing it with another weed, rather than putting it in someone else's garden and, and, and causing death and destruction in their life. Let us take that sin to the all-consuming fire of Christ. And when we deposit that in that consuming fire, we can be assured that it's not going to return to us. It's not going to be recreated within us. Men, my challenge to you today, and I want you to write that down. Stop replanting the weeds of your past in the garden of your present and delaying or destroying the fruit of your future. What are the weeds that you have in your life that maybe you have just gone through the trouble. It's like the song, my chains are gone. I've been set free. And sometimes we just take those chains and we pick them back up and we wrap ourselves back in the very chains that we've been set free from. It's no longer the enemy that's doing it. It's us that's doing it because somehow we found comfort in the restriction of the chains. Somehow the freedom is something that we don't fully understand or appreciate. And instead of adapting to the freedom we wrap ourselves back up in the chains of our past and the sins and the struggles of our past because that is where we found comfort. I'm, I'm asking you in this teaching, men, if God goes through the trouble of removing the chains, which he does, let us leave those chains and let us find a new comfort in peace. Let us find a new comfort zone in freedom. Let us find the unrestrictions that come with having a weed-free garden and embrace that rather than being bound by self-inflicted wounds and by self-inflicted sins and by the weeds of our past. Men, I'm going to ask you this morning, take the weeds of your life to the consuming fire of Christ. Those things that have been whether it's self-inflicted, whether it's weeds of circumstance or weeds of choices. Whether it's weeds that were deposited into our life by somebody else and we allowed them to take root. Or whether it's weeds of our choices that we embraced them, found comfort in them, and now we are ready to be done with them because we understand that they are destroying the fruit of our future. They're delaying the fruit of our future. Today, I want you to think about what weeds do you have in your life that you can take to the consuming fire of God and let it be destroyed, not for a time, but for an eternity. Guys, I love you. I'm thankful for you. I hope this weekly teaching has helped you in some way. I look forward to the next opportunity to share with you, and I am so honored at the opportunity that you give me to share life with you. God bless you and advance.